And to kick off, we're going to have uh, Dr. Mason uh, on real-world effectiveness of acetretin, cyclosporin, uh, fumaric acid esters, and methotrexate. Does treatment history matter? The results from the bad beer. Thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction, and I'm delighted to be presenting on behalf of my co-authors here today. Just wanted to highlight the confl conflicts of interest for the study, the British Association of Dermatologists, Biologics and Immunomodulators Register, for myself and also for my co-authors. Oral immun immunomodulators are commonly prescribed in the treatment of moderate severe psoriasis. They typically fit within the treatment pathway after patients have failed or are contraindicated to narrowband GVB and prior to the prescription of biologic therapies in patients with more severe disease. The most commonly used of those therapies are methotrexate, cyclosporin, acetretin, and fumaric acid esters. And although this looks like a linear pathway, it is not typically so in clinical practice. Methotrexate might be offered as first-line therapy or cyclosporin if rapid disease control or disease control in the short term is needed, followed by acetretin if methotrexate or cyclosporin are contraindicated. And up until recently, fumaric acid esters or fumiderm were prescribed off-license for the treatment of moderate sphere psoriasis. But there are key clinical determinants into which group of patients are receiving these therapies. Firstly, patients with psoriatic arthritis may be preferentially given methotrexate. Um, and there's also the safety issues that are highlighted on the slides in that patients receiving methotrexate may be more susceptible to developing hepatotoxicity. With renal toxicity on cyclosporin, um, women of childbearing potential not receiving acetretin, and also lymphopenia with fumaric acid esters. So in order to work out what the real-world effectiveness of these therapies looks like, we performed a systematic review. And despite how frequently they are prescribed in the treatment of moderate sphere psoriasis, the real-world data is, is considerably lacking. We only identified eight observational studies, with just over 4,500 patients with moderate sphere psoriasis included. And while there was the strengths of it being real-world evidence, and that systemic naive and systemic exposed patients were explored, which is more reflective of what is happening in clinical practice, there was inconsistencies in how effectiveness was defined in these studies, so making uh, between study comparisons very limited. But as I've already highlighted, because of the key clinical determinants on these therapies, between drug comparisons are also problematic. So our conclusion was that further exploration of effectiveness of methotrexate, acetretin, cyclosporin, and FAEs is needed in clinical practice. So our aim was to determine whether systemic treatment history predicts the effectiveness of these therapies in patients with moderate severe psoriasis in bad beer. The BADBIR is a multi-centre prospective pharmacovigilance registry with over 163 dermatology centres across the UK and Ireland actively participating. Patients must be starting or switching to one of the therapies listed and also meet the disease eligibility criteria within the yellow boxes. But for the purpose of today's talk, I'm just going to focus on these four commonly prescribed therapies in the conventional cohort. In terms of the study design, clinical follow-up uh, occurs every, three, every six months for the first three years and annually thereafter, with clinical follow-up including changes to therapy, changes in PASI, and any safety events that happen on therapy. The registration therapy can also be initiated up to six months prior to the registration date of bad beer. But for this particular piece of work, we were interested in the treatment history that patients had prior to registering on bad beer. So I've just highlighted here the three groups that we've categorised patients to. So firstly, uh, those patients who were systemic naive, so prior to registration in bad beer, these patients had never received a systemic therapy before. The second group we were interested in were prevalent users, so these patients are registering on a therapy that they have received previously. They could also have received other systemic therapies previously, but these represent a really important clinical subgroup as prevalent users of therapy are more likely to be given that therapy again if they have been given it previously. And lastly, we identified a third group which we called previous systemic users. So these were patients who were typically cycling through the systemic therapies towards a biologic. Our study population were those registering to bad beer on one of the four therapies we were interested in that also had chronic plaque psoriasis and had completed at least one follow-up 
we explored the baseline characteristics by therapy. And for effectiveness, we defined this as achieving a PASI less than or equal to three using the first reported PASI after treatment start date. We then used a multivariable logistic regression to estimate our adjusted odds ratio of achieving that effectiveness outcome. Overall, we had just over 4,000 patients included in the analysis, with 48% registering on methotrexate, 25% on cyclosporin, 19% on acetretin, and 8% on FAE. When we started to look at the patients by each um, registration therapy, we identified significant differences between these populations. So firstly, for cyclosporin, the median age was significantly younger, the patients had a shorter disease duration, and also had a significantly lower number of comorbidities at baseline as a function of the younger age. For acetretin, these patients were significantly older, with the sex bias already previously highlighted, with only 27% of females receiving acetretin. But this was also the group that was least likely to switch on to biologic therapy during follow-up in bad bear. And lastly, the group on FAE had a significantly lower baseline PASI and were more likely to have had previous systemic therapies prior to receiving Fumiderm, which is within the, the current pathway. And they also had a greater proportion of patients who went on to switch to biologic therapy. So within our submitted abstract, what we had done was look at all of the PASIs that were entered after a patient initiated their therapy and identified that up to 50% of patients achieved effectiveness at any point on therapy and that within cyclosporin, treatment history did predict having a worse outcome. But the time to that any PASI was quite variable, so we went back and explored the first PASI that achieved um, the effectiveness outcome that we were interested in. And when broken down into those patients who do achieve effectiveness um, with a PASI less than or equal to three, there were generally a longer lag to that PASI being recorded in bad beer than those patients who did not achieve it, but it's around the two to five month mark. So we took this forward and identified that overall um, cyclosporin patients were most likely to achieve effectiveness with 34% of patients achieving a PASI less than or equal to three on therapy, followed by methotrexate, then FAE, then acetretin. And then when we looked within those treatment history categories, we identified those patients that were systemic naive were the most likely to do best on therapy, apart from for fumiderm, where those patients who had received pre fumiderm previously were equally as likely to achieve effectiveness. We then explored what predicted effectiveness on each of the therapies and identified that patients who were older were more likely to respond to methotrexate but that those patients who were male or had a higher body mass index or a higher baseline PASI were less likely to achieve effectiveness on methotrexate. Moving on to cyclosporin, we identified conversely to what the literature suggests that patients who had previously received cyclosporin were less likely to achieve effectiveness on cyclosporin the second time round or subsequent time round, and that those patients again with a higher baseline disease severity were less likely to achieve effectiveness at their first PASI. For acetretin, again, prevalent users of acetretin were less likely to achieve effectiveness as a subsequent line of therapy, and those patients with a longer disease duration were also uh, less likely to achieve effectiveness. And lastly, for fumiderm, we also identified that patients who were older were more likely to respond to therapy. We identified that those patients who received previous cyclosporin or previous acetretin did not achieve the same levels of effectiveness as those who were receiving it as a first-line therapy or who were cycling through those systemic therapies. But that importantly, for clinical practice, treatment history was not influential on methotrexate with between 25 and 30% of patients achieving effectiveness with their first PASI recorded in bad beer. In terms of predicting effectiveness, older patients did better on methotrexate and FAE, but men receiving methotrexate, patients with a higher baseline severity for methotrexate or cyclosporin, higher BMI for methotrexate, or a longer disease duration for acetretin were less likely to achieve effectiveness. The strengths of our study included that we were able to explore the influence of treatment history of non-biologic systemic therapies, and that bad beer is representative of clinical practice in both the UK and the Republic of Ireland, 
but one of the biggest limitations of our study was it was not possible to explore the risk of cumulative exposure to those therapies, only whether the patient had received it or not, and that is probably a very key clinical determinant in achieving effectiveness and exploring treatment history. In conclusion, prevalent users of Saxborin and Lacitretin had poorer outcomes in terms of effectiveness on therapy. Treatment history did not predict effectiveness for methotrexate or FAE, but we did identify BMI, which is a modifiable lifestyle factor that could improve the effectiveness of methotrexate in patients with moderate severe psoriasis. In terms of where we're taking this work, as I already mentioned, we looked at patients who had ever had any PASI, and there are different treat patterns of treatment response within this data, so we, and we will be going on to explore that further. We've also started to look at discontinuation rates by treatment, and we also plan to look at real-world safety profiles for these therapies. I'd just like to thank the patients who are participating in Bad Beer, those, the principal investigators and the teams at the recruiting sites, and everyone else listed on the slide, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions? Perhaps I, perhaps I can start by asking you, um, with, with the uh, data that you've collected, do you, do you feel you've got uh, sufficient data there to suggest an algorithm for uh, ch a choice of systemic agent um, for an individual patient if you put them through an algorithm? Do you feel you've got enough data to sort of create that type of thing at, at this point? I feel we do have the data, but as we're an observational study, that would then become interventional if we tell you what was previously collected on the data and then try to shape future clinical practice. So it's not something that we are anticipating exploring, but yes, we, we have collected the data to be able to do that. Um, perhaps I could just make the point that uh, I guess your data really just looks at exposure to drug, but it really doesn't take into account dosage. And I suspect that we're probably all using weight-based doses for cyclosporin, but it might be slightly more variable, uh, particularly with acetretins. There might be quite a variety in doses of uh, uh, acetretin used by different individuals. So I guess that's a compounding factor. Absolutely. We did look at the, the doses that were entered, but unfortunately when we calculated the average daily dose for acetretin, fumidem, and for cyclosporin, and the weekly dose for methotrexate, all we had was the starting dose. We didn't have yes. what was the, the titrated uh, final dose for those therapies, and that's why we didn't include it in our model. Great, thanks. Uh, microphone number one. Um, you took my uh, question, uh, Dr. Coulson, oh. but my second question was going to be uh, uh, any um, extension to look at the future of combination treatment? Yes, absolutely. We do plan to explore that. Thank you for highlighting that. Uh, microphone number two. Thanks so much. I just wanted to ask uh, how you came to the um, using that primary outcome measure of a PASI score less than three, three or less. So within our biologic work, we've used a PASI less than or equal to 1.8, but patients in the systemic cohort, when looking at that, you, you end up with very few patients that ever achieve that, that outcome. So we chose PASI less than or equal to three to, to reflect mostly being clear, which is probably what is being achieved with these therapies within clinical practice. But it was, it was quite an arbitrary decision. Any more questions? If not, thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you very much.